Okay, guys, welcome to another video on the Conscious Crypto and Investments channel. Uh, if you're watching this on the main channel, we appreciate that as well. Uh, this is one of my favorite current uh, crypto projects. Um, these guys are a really enthusiastic team. I, I, I've had the pleasure of speaking with them uh, previous to making this video. So do me a favor and hit the like button, share, subscribe, support us on Patreon where you can find premium content. And let's get down to business. So you guys want to introduce yourselves and tell me a little bit about the project. Yeah, so I'm Diego. I'm the creator of the of the token is uh, SafeDMT. I pretty much saw the opportunity that there was in the market for. Uh, I mean, first of all, I, I saw a lot of tokens coming coming in from the uh, Binance Smart Chain, but uh, we're not doing a lot. It was just pretty much meme tokens and yeah, just Moon tokens, which. A lot of people were making a lot of money on, but they were not doing that much. So I thought the opportunity there to have that as well, but also combine it with something that will create a positive impact. And that for me was um, that for me was my passion for psychedelics and what they have done on. All was there any particular reason why you chose DMT? I know this, this, the, 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 um, the more people that haven't. Yep. Say again. Yeah, that uh, this is uh, the case for me, and I know that for a fact that there is even more people that haven't had the luck to even experience these things, or they are too scared because of the stigma that this um, that these substances have in in today's society because that's what we have been told to that they're harmful that they will make you go insane or we will ruin our lives forever things like this which is um 99 lies and there could be a a community that stands up for this and shares the true message of uh, what these things are about the potential for psycho psychedelic therapy and just many many things uh, on top of that yeah one of the things that i appreciate so much about uh psychedelic research and supporting psychedelic research is that psychedelics have been shown to be efficacious for so many different medical applications from addiction to ptsd also they tend to have this uh, uh effect on people that they make them more environmentally conscious more um socially aware uh people you know in the 60s they all dropped acid and they went out and protested the vietnam war so it's like you can support this one um this one area of research but in reality you're having a massive impact on uh, potentially a tremendous uh spectrum of different um uh sociological and and, and cultural uh issues so i i think that that is really really uh uh, wonderful. In fact, uh, one of the recent, um, well, and this actually spans many decades that this has been happening. Uh, in the 1960s, uh, Humphrey Osmond, one of the researchers that was working for the government, actually said uh, that the psychedelics, in his opinion, could treat every known neurological aberration, oftentimes in a single dose. And that's one of the great misconceptions, as you were saying, that, that uh, people believe that these things are harmful because they just assume that the researchers told the government that they were dangerous and harmful and when in, in reality the researchers said the opposite and in my opinion the the uh, government went and shut them down because they were a threat to big pharma and because of the um just the psychological uh impact of 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 uh, causing people to think for themselves um for those that might not know out there the main mechanism that facilitates the uh, uh ability or 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 the um the, the, the capacity for psychedelics to heal all of these neurological problems is uh, the neurogenesis, which is uh, stimulating new brain cell growth and new neural pathways. All psychedelics from ketamine to LSD, DMT, of course, have been shown to do this. And also uh, restoring neuroplasticity, which is the ability for old patterns in the brain to reform. And I think one of the reasons that we run into so much skepticism uh, in regards to uh, these compounds and their ability to heal all of these problems is that it's it works so well. And I think that if people understood the neurological 
uh, the neuroscientific um, processes that are involved, they would understand why they're so efficacious and it wouldn't be so such a difficult pill to swallow, so to speak. By the way, the name Safe DMT turned out to be even more appropriate than I thought as an advocate of psychedelics. Uh, I actually went and Googled uh, DMT and looked for adverse reactions, people hurting themselves, uh, any kind of overdoses, and I was unable to find a single case of anything seriously happening to anyone. So um, that there is none. Yeah, not yeah. at all. Yeah, that's correct. Uh -huh. So what about tokenomics? Judge, you want to jump in? I need to take this. So we have a 12% um, tax. 3% of that is reflected back to the users. And then the, the remaining 9%, uh, half of that is distributed to the charities. And then the other half is used for our marketing. But we have a charity burn function um which helps to increase the value of the token um this was this was actually something that diego came up with it's a it's quite a clever mathematical little um setup which which he proposed um so i'm just i uh i was hunting for for new crypto projects after after being involved in sort of the mainstream cryptocurrencies um came across the bsc smart chain projects and within a couple of weeks i'd come across the the sort of launch group for for this project um and i kind of just jumped on and offered my services mostly i'm working on copy and kind of uh helping to to kind of get momentum behind the project and get it driving um i've got experience delivered to them um you know in a controlled setting with, with proper therapists who understand how to administer it and how to guide people through the experience um you know uh, in it and to, to get like the most out of the experience these people have these amazing design things there's so much research which has gone into it but there's like this little you can you can see it's almost there it's right on the edge and and if these people had access to that i know it would make a massive change in their life you know there's there's, there's people out there dying of suicide because that's they they feel like they've got nowhere else to go i read this incredible book it was called autism on acid and this guy was an autistic guy and have you read it no it's, it's no. a fascinating it's a fascinating read but he said he said you know he, he basically you know committed himself to just going off traveling for a bit and then and then ending his life and while he was doing that um someone offered him lsd and he took it and all of a sudden he could understand all of the situations he'd been in where he hadn't been able to understand people's emotions and all of a sudden he understood empathy and, he, and all of this stuff just came flooding in and he was able to replay all these moments in his life and go ah oh, that's why that happened. That's why that happened. That's why that happened. Oh, I get it now. Right. Oh, my. and he just had this, he just sat in this woods for like, you know, six hours having this epiphany over a, after epiphany about all of these things in his life. And then he went on this experiment where he's like, okay, well, what is, you know, how can I, how can I use this in my life to, to actually engage? You know, it completely turned around. Suicide thoughts gone. Um, new understanding of life. And, and he, he, you know, he says, I'm a sample group of one, but there is a huge amount of promise here. Um, and so that's that's why I've, that's why I've kind of jumped on this project and, you know, um, just want to push it forward, just want to make it happen, just really excited about about where it could go. And, you know, yeah, just just and it, it is definitely uh, definitely one of the most powerful ways to generate um, uh, money for for um, for different causes. Uh, and I think that, you know, for me, the two the two main uh, things that drive my life are. Um, trying to contribute to the evolution of consciousness, protecting the Amazon rainforest, and promoting psychedelic research. And, uh, you know, we were uh, just a few months ago, before we really got involved with cryptocurrency, uh, I was thinking, you know, how can we possibly make conservation or contributing to research profitable? And so I think this is a really unique opportunity uh, for people to... Um, to do that, to, to benefit personally while also making a contribution to the collective. Exactly. And that's, that's really the whole thing about this project, because what is a danger of at the moment is all of the money which was going to uh, people like MAPS and, and other people that are protecting the indigenous tribes, that money is starting to be diverted into the bigger pharma companies that are planning to, you know, monopolize patent and cash in on this type of project. And there's a risk that that all of the money gets diverted to those guys because people want to speculatively, you know, if they want to see something back for their money, they just want to give it away. 
And so having a project where, hey, look, if everybody who believes in the power of psychedelics comes in on this project, you don't have to put a huge amount in, only a small amount in. If everyone who believes in it does it, then we're going to generate a huge amount of money for the organizations which are fighting to push this forward and have been fighting for years to do this. You know, Rick Doblin started MAPS in, in um, hey, about 30 years ago, right? And he's, he's just about to get the MDMA trial over the line after so many years of pushing. And they, they still need funding. People mm. like the Berkeley group, you know, they need funding. There's, 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 there's a lot of, of uh, people doing this for the right reasons. And I think it's important that, that those are the people we're supporting with this project. Well, again, on top of that, since there's the, uh, the, the personal profit um, element as well, so you're empowering the people that are of like mind that are probably doing other things in their lives that you're going to approve of. So there's just, just as psychedelics treat so many levels or treat uh, issues on so many levels, this is sort of like a, the, um, it's a, 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 a um, what is the word um financial uh reflection of that sort of concept or that mechanism or capacity of psychedelics to, to function in that way just like the story you were telling about the the guy that had autism i i have a cousin who has autism and uh, i've been trying to convince my aunt for quite some time to give him just small doses of mushrooms and she's coming from the you know mainstream matrix mind and she really doesn't want to have anything to do with it um but, you know, it's just it's just another example. I mean, you were talking about how that guy, uh, you know, he was contemplating suicide and he was autistic. And so he was able to address, you know, not only his autism and he can probably look people in the eye now. And I've read a lot of stories where, you know, that it's had that effect on autistic people that one single dose has made such a substantive difference in their um, in, the, in their in their psychological patterning that they're actually able to make eye contact and start to um, maybe socialize a little bit more normally. Um, yeah, so, and they can and, then, and they can carry the lessons. They can carry the lessons that they learn during. Yeah, this and they're also treating this depression. Uh, I was yeah. I was actually listening to Elon Musk uh, the other day. I was just scrolling through TikTok and I I I, I, I came upon him talking about how. Um, a very similar idea to Terence and Dennis McKenna's uh, idea of the reducing valve in consciousness. Um, he was talking about how we reduce, uh, you know, all of this spectrum, this massive spectrum of input into this very narrow bandwidth, uh, because it's the only way that we're able to process our reality. But in the process of doing so, we remove a tremendous amount of, of information, and some of it might be relevant to us. And so I think that, you know, aside from the... Um, neuroscientific, the, the, the biophysical basis uh, on, on, through which these uh, chemicals work, you know, in a, in a purely um, deterministic uh, sense, there's also that, that, that level of allowing uh, temporary uh, capacity. Yeah, I don't think we ever got into the technical aspects of your tokenomics, though, did we? No, no. Um, should we do that? So, okay, so the total supply is one quadrillion. We have a 12% transaction tax. Um, three percent of that goes back to holders distributed um, based on the amount of tokens that they hold and nine percent goes back to the LP pool. We have a, a weekly uh, charity burn which removes 60 percent of the newly accumulated tokens from the pool and then the majority is automatically passed on to institutions which are voted on by the community um, dedicated to the um, progression of psychedelic research and therapy. So we, we extracted 50% 50, 50 BNB and 50% SDMT. Um, of the extracted uh, BNB, 50% go to charity, 20 to business development, 20 to marketing, and 15 to the stability reserve. And then of the extracted safety MT, we burn 67% of that, 27% towards the stability reserve, and then 6% for giveaways. Nice. And so you're going to have like, a, uh, uh, you're going to allow the community to choose uh, where the donations go. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, we usually do voting so everyone can chime in and, um, yeah, say where they think this money should go towards because at the end it's everyone's money. So we try to involve the community as much as we can. We also do it this way with the tokenomics because we don't want to be safe. because we we also at some point have some point had a charity and a donation wallet for this stuff uh, with some token reserve on there but that will involve us selling the tokens at certain points and we don't want to be doing that because that will 
decrease the price of the token. So we don't want to be doing sellings in this way. So this is a nicer method that we decided uh, not too long ago. Um, it's working pretty well so far. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, all psychedelic organizations, we are hopeful, will accept safety MT as a currency, and then we can donate directly to them in SDMT. And then as the value of the token grows, the value of the, the SDMT that they're holding grows as well. And then they can use that as they, you know, see fit to further their research. So how about a roadmap? Do you guys have a timeline for uh, like specific developments? We do indeed. And targets? We do indeed. Who wants to cover the roadmap? Yeah, we have uh, quite some things uh, lined up uh, on a roadmap. Um, there, there is a lot, a lot of the usual. We want to get into centralized exchanges. We want to get listed on CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap, uh, very usual. But we still have some requirements to meet for those. So we're hoping we can reach that and, and make a, you submit the form so we can get listed on those. We also have quite a bit of uh, collaborations on the way for YouTube. I mean, this, uh, we are doing a collaboration right now. So that was on the roadmap. Um, we also have lined up uh, another collaboration with Dakota Wind. Oh, he's Dakota Fair right now. He's a pretty big uh, psychedelic YouTuber as well. I really respect and like his content as well. He's done amazing documentaries traveling around the world, talking about tradition and psychedelics. A uh, really nice guy as well and humble. And he's really in for the cause as well. Um, we are in talks also with uh, Psych Substance that uh, pretty much everyone uh, knows about his channel at this point in the psychedelic community. At least if you are more or less young, I would say, or of this psychedelic uh, generation, I guess. So it's pretty big. We expect expect uh, a lot of newcomers from them because it's just the perfect audience as well. And yeah, we are hoping we can grow this token. And as always, as, as I always say, everyone is welcome to join and not only join as a holder, but also come here and tell us uh, this can be better. Give us some feedback. Maybe you have a skill that you will, can share towards the cost. you can also very welcome to contribute. That's what a lot of people have done and we are just barely starting. So if everyone joins and they are able to share uh, a skill that they feel they can contribute, imagine uh, how far we can uh, reach with uh, a lot of people doing uh, things, collaborating together that at the end, that, that, that is also the point that we all get together and not just as individuals, but we all get together and put our skills together for the greater cause that we believe in. And if we do that, it is definitely possible that we will reach a, a big impact. Is Andrea still with us? Yeah, I'm here, hi. Um, well, I was just wondering if you wanted to talk a little bit about your role and uh, I know you guys are planning on having a new website up and running. Well, I'm Andrea and I'm in charge of the marketing department and I think it's also important to mention that we will work to protect indigenous tribes because they are the ones who preserved psychedelics through industrialization. And the ultimate goal is to connect all psychedelic communities together in order to, to learn from each other. Yeah, that is something that I definitely place a very high value as someone that's coming more from uh, California LSD culture originally uh, and now having um, experienced, uh, you know, many, many years in the jungle with the indigenous people and shamans. Uh, all of these compounds, you know, there's a lot of overlap. So they're all uh, potentially good at treating the same kind of things and offer the same kind of benefits, but certainly, uh, you know, for example, ayahuasca, uh, which DMT is a component of, um, is much better for emotional trauma 
Um, but I've noticed it doesn't seem to do a whole lot for a uh, bouncy ego. So um, there's definitely a, a lot of need for a, a holistic approach and uh, a, a, a wide spectrum of knowledge. So, so I really strongly agree with that. And that's you know, another thing that, that really attracted me personally to this project, because that's basically what I'm doing here. Psychedelics, especially, I guess, ayahuasca have, have really benefited me. And so now I'm living in the Amazon trying to contribute to the uh, indigenous communities. And I, I know we've discussed this, that uh, setting setting uh, uh, some of some of the um, like the the different organizations up with wallets so that they're able to receive donations from cryptocurrency and getting some education done is something you guys were also interesting in contributing to. So we definitely really appreciate that and respect that. And um, and so yeah, fantastic. We just we just had we we have one more team member joining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like. Hey everybody! How's it going? So you want to introduce Hello. yourself? Talk about your role in the hey. project. Uh, one second. Uh, okay. Hi, uh, I'm Stefan. I'm a team member of SDMT. Um, been in it from the very very start. Uh, going through rough time now with our. Uh, redeployment of the website, revamping of the whole design. Um, I'm a huge believer in the in the potential of blockchain tech um, for well, the betterment of of society in in pretty much any aspect. Really. It's uh, to me, it's unlimited potential, and the the decentralized nature and the the ability to and to have completely uh, autonomous community projects that like pick uh, pick um, an area where in which they want to improve in which they want to uh, enrich their entire community it's it's mind blowing it's it's really 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 exciting to be part of this and I'm a huge believer i think it's worth saying that one of the, one of the things that drew you to this project is is that you do work in mental health and yeah. combining oh, yeah. that with the fact that you've been in crypto since what was it 2012 you, you've been in crypto 2012 since? yeah i bought, <laughs> my, bought my first bitcoin Better read a long time. uh lost most of it so <laughs> i'm not super rich i didn't benefit of it much but i always stayed around always uh, watching from the sidelines uh learning more and more about blockchain tech um, with the development in the, in the nft space that's that's coming around now uh, giving people the ability to basically own their own data sets it's uh it's, it's huge it's so much potential and about the healthcare or let's say mental health crisis epidemic um and me being being involved in institutional mental health care and psychiatric wards working uh, I'm, I'm a nurse uh, working in those and seeing <clears throat> the current state of classical therapy, which is mostly reduced to sedating, sedating people to to a level in, in which they they completely lose um, their per personality. Basically. It's inhumane. Um, yeah, well, then you you can start talking about uh, addiction coming along with these, the heavy use of, of, of medication when you talk about, uh, uh, I don't know the, the English names, but Star Wars uh, is a very, very common, um, very common medication for people with uh, psychosis. And they become completely dependent and uh, at a certain point when they spent a couple of months or years in these institutions, uh, most of their life revolves around um, fear of like a psychotic push and the constant need for, for sedation. And that's, that's so far from, removed from any healthy, 
environment that allows for for healing. That, uh, it's not. It's, really, it's, it's, it's just the block. It's just the masking of the symptoms. Yes, 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 yes. It's just. Uh, oh, it's sedation. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. It's, I mean, we're not we're not claiming we're not claiming that psychedelics are going to cure all of the world's problems, but no. what we want is for them to be an option for people. Yes, needs to the this avenue needs to be explored. I, I, I don't think it's an overstatement though to say that um, the, the the potential uh, uh, range of applications is potent is is greater than than any known medicine or treatment. And uh, I think the clinical huge. research has established over a period of decades now that there really is no competition. Uh, the uh, for addiction, for example, uh, oftentimes a single dose is able to. Um, Produce uh, lasting results in 85% of the people uh, that, that 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 take the treatment, and I think the the normal rate of success is something like 15%. And uh, I'm I, I'm also pretty confident that that the, about the same um, uh, efficacy has been measured or established uh, for any of the applications that psychedelics are applied. So it's not. You know, I mean, I agree that we don't want to be over evangelical. Um, but I think it's actually really difficult to oversell the potential of psychedelics and the importance of psychedelic research. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. I think I think for me, for me, the research I'm seeing says that the single the single dosing, um, it, it you know it shows it shows if that it works after a single dose. But you you'll find that you will need a top up after you know some people two weeks, some people six months. Mm -hmm. But even people who have had a single dose experience still carry. The learning from that experience for the rest of their lives mm -hmm. it is like that and it's, it's something that it won't create an addiction in them it won't create severe adverse side effects that they will have to carry on with the rest of their lives and that is something that is not often found in other pharmaceuticals uh, i would say and not only that it, it just as I mentioned, it, it doesn't create an addiction, and it's not just that, but it also works to reverse addiction. In a lot of people, have uh, this has happened. They has they have uh, used psychedelics to stop smoking. Some people use ibogaine to drop off very hard substances like like crack cocaine or very strong addictions. And this stuff that has been used under the table to cure a lot of stuff. And it could help a way bigger amount of people if this became the, a more mainstream and it didn't have the negative connotations that it has been given to from the bigger pharmacy and governments uh, for so long. Yeah, for sure. What, one of the things Thomas McKenna said, he said, look, look if, if the solution doesn't make money, it's going to be really hard to sell it. And this, we feel, is the solution that will make money. This is this is the global consensus on the use of psychedelics as an as an investment, speculative, that says, "Hey, everybody, stand up, jump in on this. Just you know, put a small amount in. It doesn't have to be a huge amount. You know, obviously, if you want to invest a large amount, go for it. But you know, from small acorns, we can really make a change here." Well, on that note, uh, you know, you guys definitely have my support. I mean, I've been in your Telegram, and you guys are super active all the time. You're super responsive to questions. Uh, I mean, I don't think usually more than I, I, uh, a half an hour goes by at the most before I ever uh, have to wait for a response for anything, uh, even at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the same person that I had also spoken to at 10 o'clock in the morning would respond. Uh, so I know you guys are putting in a tremendous amount of hours. Uh, I think that your sincerity and dedication and enthusiasm is uh, readily apparent. This is a very translucent team, uh, uh, a transparent team. Uh, there's, uh, I think, zero possibility that there is any kind of scamming intent here, which is becoming, uh, uh, that makes a project a gym in and of itself. Uh, I think your market cap at the moment is super low. So anyone that puts in money now, um, I mean, I think that as, as far as values investment goes, specific, certainly for my community, uh, there's not going to be a better project out there, um, uh, even, even if it wasn't for 
uh, the spectacular team that's involved just in terms of the concept. Um, so I want to thank you guys so much for being who you are and doing what you're doing. And uh, I look forward to, you know, maybe we'll do a follow up in a couple of months so we can say, hey, look, you know, now Rogan's got safety and T tattooed on his forehead and we're just <laughs> taking over the world. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hey man, thanks for ha thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. It's, um... Yeah, really a pleasure. Yeah, we hope you can come back and do the follow up as you mentioned. I think uh, it would be great for people. People, I'm sure they're going to be interested, and they will be looking forward for two months and seeing where we are at and what we have done and what is the next plan. Yeah, thanks a lot, man, for uh, giving us an opportunity to to talk about the project and to show the networking process uh, of, of people with similar interests coming together for, for a common cause. And it's like this, this grassroots kind of a movement, kind of energy. I, I like that a lot. It's, it's amazing to see. This is how we have to do it, because I think that, you know, the yep. best hedge against volatility in this market is a values investment, basically. You know, people yeah. are only going to stay invested if they really believe in the uh, in, in the purpose that is behind the project. So um, and I think this is something that is, is is huge on people's minds because we're in the midst of the most threatening chaosophy in the history of, of, of the planet. I think that that's not paranoid or um, over o overly dramatic to, to put it that way. And so, uh, and that, you know, as we've established, I think the, the, the efficacy of psychedelics to mitigate um, so much harm is so great that, you know, this is this is the fundamental type of grassroots project that we need to see. Um, it's brilliant, you know, that cryptocurrency can generate uh, the kind of money that it can. Yeah. And so, you know, this is exactly what we need at exactly the time that we need it. And if you want to rise above all the dirt and grime, you add the right spice at the right time. And I think that's what's happening with safety and tea. And so, again, thank you guys so much. When you purchase safety and tea on Pancake Swap. You have to change the last digit of the amount of safe DMT you're purchasing to a one or a nine. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.